Welcome to Abundant Life Church. We're so glad that you've joined us. Or know that you're just coming on now and maybe you hear my voice and you're like, oh, it's church time. Well, let's get ready. Come on on. Let's chat a little bit. Talk to each other. Here we go. We got one person. Welcome. Thank you so much. We are so glad that you are here. Hello, Marissa. Please give me, let me give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you're here joining with us. Good morning, Helene. Hello, good morning, Reedhead family. Hello, Maud Samard and probably Tim Samard. We know that you're there. They're coming on now. They're, they're joining with us. Welcome. We'll just give you a few minutes to grab your beverage, grab your family. You know, there's that one family member that's like, I don't want to do it. Go grab them. Get them here. Good morning, Maureen. We are so glad that you're with us. We're, this is great that people are joining with us. And feel free to talk to each other. Give us a thumbs up if you like something that you hear or like a song. Um, we would just love to be able to hear from you. We want to interact. Um, we got some really great feedback that you enjoyed this, so that's great. Marissa, Helene, hello, Marin family. Good morning. We are glad that you are joining with us. I love seeing the emojis too, the happy emojis. This is, this is awesome. Just wait a couple more minutes to see if anybody else will join us. And we're just so grateful even for those that are just watching and we're just glad that you are, are watching us as well. So thank you so much for taking the time. We're going to be here every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And we're just so glad that you are with us. Hello. Oh, hello. Coombs family. Braxton says hi. So hi, Braxton. Welcome. I'll give you a shout out. Hello, Carol and John. Oh, good morning, Anna. Anna's so great. She just says hi to everybody. That's fantastic. So good morning to you, Anna. We're so glad that you are here. Well, keep coming on. I'm going to try to talk to you as you're, as you're joining with us. Hello, Adai family. He says hello to everyone. Welcome. We're just going to go into a time of worship now. And we, we know that you can worship anywhere. We know that you can worship at your home. Like I said, if you're driving, keep your eyes open. That's, that's okay. But we just want you to just gather together with your family. And let's just worship. Let's just sing these songs together. And remember who it's about. It's about God. And we want to worship God anywhere we are. So let's just go now into a time of worship. We're excited to worship together with you.
so amazing to know that we are his children. I, I don't know about you, but I just love the words of that song that we're children. Because there's no longer, we need to be a slave to fear. And like that first song that says that God so loved us. Like, man, I hope that you're encouraged this morning already knowing that God loves you, that you don't have to be a slave to fear, that you are his child. Well, there's a few more people that have have joined us, the laborers, they're actually driving to their bear stand. So there was actually somebody driving. So welcome, Laborn family. The Lemons say good morning. Good morning to you, Lemon family. Wow, this is so great. I love seeing you guys chat with each other. It's so cool to, to see this. This is the, the church happening. Let's see, oh, good morning, Tim Samard, welcome. Let's see, I think I saw Sally had joined us. Yes, good morning to you, Sally. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Alyssa, good morning to you. Wow, look at this. I can't even keep up. You guys are so quick. You're coming in. So many people are joining us online. Thank you so much for, for taking the time. Oh, even Amy and Daniel. Wow, thank you so much. And also, don't forget Benoit and Jose are here as well. They're going to be here all morning. They're, they're just great. Uh, they're, just, they're, they're just nailing it. They're just killing it. You know, whatever the word is that you, you're, you kids are using today. But uh, we're just so grateful that they're here with us. And I just love their, their worshipful hearts and how they just lead us into to worship. Oh, there is a couple of things happening. So um, I just want to just kind of highlight Alpha is starting this Tuesday. I'm excited. We have a few people that are joining with us, and I'm just really excited to be diving into kind of a new way to do Alpha. But if you want to join, there still is some spots, and, and it's free. It's a free online course. You get a chance to meet some people, figure out some of your questions, and uh, we're just going to kind of dive into that. So that starts this Tuesday at 7 30 if you would like to to join that uh just email me abundant life pastor dan at gmail.com just want to check here i don't think there's any new people saying hello but we're glad that you're here with us also mother's day coming up we have not forgotten about you moms you moms are awesome and we have an amazing prize giveaway it's right here behind me if you see all wrapped in this beautiful pink Wrapping, but there is like brand new books, like new books written by some amazing uh, female authors that I think you're really going to enjoy. There's turtles in there. There's some beautiful candles. Like this is like a sixty dollar value basket at least, people. So like, you definitely want to try to win this. And we also want to just thank you for a couple of generous uh, businesses for donating. Talkingly simple. Sunset Gourmet and Pampered Chef. Thank you for adding. So their stuff is in this basket. I see Quality Street and Turtle Chocolate. There's like the books back here. Like, come on, moms, you wanna win this basket. So all you have to do is submit a picture with your kids. It can be an old picture. It can be a new picture. It can be a drawing. I don't, I don't know, maybe you wanna just draw a picture of you and your family and submit it. But uh, you can go to our Facebook page, 
post about a Mother's Day giveaway and you can submit your picture there or you could submit it to AbundantLifePastorDan at gmail.com. And some of the pictures I've already seen are amazing. They're cute, they're funny. Uh, so keep those pictures coming. If you haven't already, if there's a mom in your house, ask her, has she submitted the picture for this giveaway? And we just want a, a mom to win. Oh yes, Alpha is awesome. Yes, describing Amy's letting you know some of the the things that are inside this basket. So moms and moms, we we love you. You're you're amazing people. You're just you're doing a great job. So keep keep going. Good morning to to Benjamin Benjamin Joseph. Hey, right beside me. Good morning. We are glad that you, you have joined us as well. Oh, it's good to laugh, people, okay? If you're not laughing, um, laugh at me, laugh with me. Either way, you're laughing. But uh, we want to start a new series this month. It is a new month, the month of May. In case you didn't know, I know sometimes you you don't even know what day it is anymore. We're just, But we have started a new month, and we're starting a new series called Bless This Home. And I wanted to kind of throw out a, a, a question right off the bat. How many of you want your families or homes to be blessed? And if that's you, just give me a thumbs up in the, in the chat. If that is you, if you're saying, yes, my family, my home, I want us to be blessed. Oh, raise hands, yes. Give us an emoji, I see lots of thumbs up going. It's I, I kind of already knew the answer, but it's one of those questions that maybe we don't always think about. Maybe you say that you want your home to be blessed. Yeah, I want my family to be blessed, but are you doing anything about that? Are you working at making this happen? So we are gonna kind of go through this month. We know that we're in this pandemic. We're at a stay at home order. Some of you are, are maybe thinking, you know what? It would be really blessed if my family would just leave. My home would be so much blessed. But we want to kind of give you some, some tips and look at some different ways. We're going to be looking at Jesus' teaching in Matthew 5. A lot of what's in Matthew 5 is also known as the Beatitudes. And we're just going to kind of look at some of these things that Jesus talks about to kind of help us to have blessed homes. Because we here at Abundant Life Church, we want you to have blessed homes. Maybe you even want to repeat that to yourself right now. I want to have a blessed home. So in Matthew 5 verse 6, it says this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for for righteousness, for they will be filled. See, what Jesus is trying to, to share with us, what he's trying to, to teach us here, is this is about what do you crave and desire? What are those things in your life that you're chasing after, that you, you, you spend your time on? Where, if we were to ask the people in your home or people around you, I know my kids, unfortunately, they would say, Daddy's on his phone a lot, probably because I maybe am on my phone too much. But how do you spend your time? What are your priorities? This is what Jesus was trying to get at here. He was trying to, to say, listen, what, what is it that you spend your time doing? What are your priorities? What are you craving? What are you desiring? And what is the atmosphere that you bring when you're around people? How, does, how do the other people, how do you make them feel? Do you make them feel hopeful, encouraging? Do you bring Jesus with you wherever you go? Or do you add to some of the negativity? And these are things that Jesus is wanting us to think through. And then he talks about being filled. And this talks about what is overflowing out of you. What do people hear from you, see from you, because eventually it's going to come out. 
And it might happen at home, it might happen on social media, it might happen in the grocery store. People are gonna see who you are. And Jesus is challenging us that what are you craving for, what are you desiring is important to know. How you're spending your time, your priorities. So, let's kind of bring it down to what we wanna talk about this morning. Let me ask you, what does your home look like? Now maybe your answer would be, oh, it's, it's great, <laughs> perfect. Just look at my social media account. We're lovely, we go on nice, well, we used to go on nice vacations. Uh, we take these beautiful family pictures. But if I was to really spend some time with you, if I was to spend a week with you, what would I see? If someone was to come and, and visit with you, what would they see? What would your home look like? Or maybe the better question is, what do you want your home to look like? Maybe you've been praying a long time that there would be peace in your home, that there would be more of Jesus in your home. And that is why it's so important that we hunger and thirst for righteousness should begin at home. You know what, I, I know we talk a lot and, and coming together on a Sunday morning is so important, but we have to realize that for the rest of that week, you are with your family, you are in your home. So it's important that we hunger and thirst for righteousness. Because you know what will happen is that if you do it as moms and dads, if you lead the way, if you say, I am going to hunger and thirst, we as a married couple are going to hunger and thirst for righteousness, that the people at your home will take watch. Your kids will notice. Your kids will, will notice that, wow, you know, they were really frustrated and, and, and upset, but they didn't lose their temper. Um, they, they pray with us before we go to school or we go to bed. They, I see them reading their Bible. I see my parents praying. And it's not that we're trying to do it so that we can boast and say, that's right, I have a really great devotional life. I'm up at 5 a.m. every day. The birds are singing and I'm reading my Bible and it's just illuminating my soul. I have my beverage... But if your, parent, if your kids can see this, we want to have homes where we desire to be like Jesus. And maybe for some of you, I, I'm not trying to make you feel bad or make you feel guilty because you may be really brand new to Jesus, brand new to Christianity, and you're saying, I'm really trying. That's amazing. I'm not here to browbeat people. I'm not here to beat you over the head and say, come on. But we are simply opening the scriptures and saying if we want to have a blessed home, that we need to take steps. We need to begin to hunger and thirst for righteousness. We need to try to be more like Jesus in our homes. So, what do you hunger for? For me, I hunger for pizza. I love pizza. If my, my, my wife says, you could have pizza for every single dinner and you would be happy and I would probably be like, yep, that's true. Oh, my home is crazy. Ro Martin just joined us. Welcome, Ro. Yeah. We have a thing that we do family pizza movie nights. And this is something that maybe I get, I look forward to the most because it involves pizza. But we have these family pizza movie nights. But, but does it go past that? I'm not saying that having game nights or having movie nights or going for walks and hikes with your family, those things are important. Having family moments, if you're doing those things, 
kudos to you. That's amazing. But we want to kind of look at the spiritual tone of your house. Do you ever gather together your family for family devotions? I'm not talking about, do you read the Bible on your own, but do you open up the Bible with your kids? And if you have never done this before, you know what you might want to try to do? Try just doing it once a week. Just pick a day, say, okay, this week seems to be, we're not as busy. We're going to spend this time after dinner. We're just going to open the Bible and read some verses and then pray together. It doesn't have to be complicated, but are you opening up your Bible? Are you praying with your kids? Do they hear you reading the scriptures? If you need help with this, we, we have uh, some friends of ours that, that we were able to get some uh, family devotional books, and we'd love to give you one free. If you're interested in that, please reach out to me, and I can drop that off for you within the next couple of weeks. And it's just a guide, just a way to kind of get you talking about the Bible, asking questions about who Jesus is. And also, don't be afraid if you don't know all the answers. Kids, we're going to have some really good questions sometimes. I know sometimes my kids, they ask me questions and I go, I don't know the answer. And I go and try to find out. Right now with our kids, is we're teaching them to kind of take their prayer time to a different level. Where it's not just, Jesus, help me to have a great day. And if that's where your kids are at, perfect. But for me and, and Amy, we want to try to help our kids to kind of develop their prayer language a little bit. Begin to think about other people with their prayers. So that is one area that we're really working with our boys, is to try to help them through their prayers. But I just want to give you a couple of tips here that maybe will help you to hunger for God in your own home. The first thing is involve God in conversations. That's a really a good way to start, is just begin to, to bring God into the conversation. If you're talking about the pandemic, if you're talking about the world, think about ways that you can bring God into the conversation. If you know they're having a rough day, pray together with them. Try to find ways to bring God into the conversation. Now, the second one, this is going to be a, a hard one. Because I think sometimes we struggle with this one. But make church non-negotiable. Ooh. That could be tough. And I know, because I was that kid in my family. My, my parents were the pastors of the church. And I would regularly tell them, I don't want to go. And they would be like, you're going. It's Sunday morning. And then I would even try to fake sickness. I would try to find ways out of it. But they never let me off the hook. And I needed to go to church. And, and there's something about making that a priority where you say, listen, even if it's online church, we are going to gather together as a family at 10 a.m. We are going to be watching church. And begin to set the tone. And at first, yeah, they might push back. They might say, oh, I don't want to. But begin to make this a priority. Make this a part of what you do. Because I believe that when we gather together, there's something special that happens. When we gather together as a community, when we gather together as families in church. And also, you know, if you have kids, 9.30, we have a Zoom family chat that they can join and, and be with other families. Take advantage of that. If you have teenagers, Tell them that about our youth programs and say, we really, you should be going to youth. We have junior high on Thursday nights. We have high school on 
Friday nights. And I know, I know, I know we're busy people. There's a lot going on. We're tired, we're exhausted. But if you never make this a priority, there's no way that your kids are ever gonna make this a priority. And one day they're gonna be 18 and they're gonna be able to make their own choice. And if they have never seen it modeled for, for them, if church has never really been a priority, then why would they ever make it a priority? So make church non-negotiable. And then the last one is serve one another in the home. Some of the kids just checked out on that one. We're like, whoa, serve, help people? Oh no, that's my parents' job. No, we need to serve each other in the home. We need to find ways to, to help each other. This morning, that was so cool. My, my youngest son, there was two toaster strudels left and he yells up to his brother, you know, if hey, that was me, I might have just ate them both. But he's like, do you want a toaster strudel? And he, he, was, he let him have the last one. And then he went and poured his apple juice. And I was just like, this is amazing. But serving one another, the tone in your home will change as you begin to help one another, show kindness to one another. Maybe there's someone in your family that if you were to do this, it would change their attitude. Or the, the vice versa, if they began to serve other people, you would begin to see a change in them. But serving one another. So kind of three ways to hunger for God in your home, involve God in the conversation, make church non-negotiable, and serve one another in the home. There's a verse in the, the Old Testament, Joshua 24, verse 15, and it says this, Then choose this day who you will serve. But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. And, and what is happening here in this story is Joshua is now, he is the leader of the Israelites. He has been the leader of the Israelites for a long time. And, and they're getting to this point where they're getting closer to, to this promised land that God has, has promised them for many years. And then all of a sudden, you know, Things just aren't going the way that people thought they should be going. God wasn't doing what they thought he should be doing. And they begin to grumble, and they begin to complain, and they begin to say, I think that we should make the trip back to Egypt. They'd come a long way now. And they, and there was this, this, these people were choosing. Some were saying, yeah, I still think God is great. I think we should follow him through to the end. And there was this other group of people that were like, no, we like what, how Egypt did it better. We liked the false gods. We didn't mind Egypt. I don't, God's letting us down too much. I don't think we can follow God anymore. And Joshua kind of silences the people. And he says, listen, Listen, people, you need to make a choice. And I want to let you guys know that me as the leader here, me, Joshua, me and my family, we are going to serve the Lord. And he said, I don't want anybody just to be, oh, I think I'll serve God one day and then not another day. He's like, no, we're all in here. Me and my family, we are serving God. What about you? And he was challenging them. He was like, make the decision. Don't leave it up to someone else. You know, we have, there is great teaching out there. You can get teaching about just about any subject from a Christian standpoint. But what it comes down to is in your home. 
And he's challenged the families to make a choice. You need to make a choice. Remember we talked about at the beginning, I asked you, how many of you want to have a blessed home? Well, if you want that to happen, then you need to make the choice. You need to decide and say, starting today, we are a family that serves the Lord. We are a family that loves Jesus. We are a family that, that Jesus is going to be a part of this home. We are going to hunger and thirst for Jesus. And you need to make the choice. Are you going to have tough days? Is it going to be hard? Is it going to be stressful? Yes, yes, and yes. Just because you, you know, Joshua, just because he made that decision to, to follow, follow God and say uh, our family didn't mean that everything was perfect. There were still a lot more battles that they would have to go through. There was still a lot more that they would have to go through as a family and as a nation. And there's going to be a lot more that we have to go through as families. Stay-at-home orders, they're hard. Online schooling, there's a lot there. But you, you need to make that decision. This is the choice that you have. And to start to make steps, start to try to, and, and just start gradually. If there's just, maybe you just want to start yourself, that you're going to spend time with God yourself as a parent and say, God, how do I do this? How do I bring peace into our home? How do I make our home blessed? And then begin, as God begins to speak to you and allow God's love to come around you, and then begin to lead your home that way. And yes, are they going to resist? Yes. They're kids. They're not just going to accept everything. But you got to teach them. You got to work with them. You got to help them through this. And I know you can do it. Like I said at the beginning, we want you to have a blessed home. God wants you to have a blessed home. Do you want to have a blessed home? Here's kind of a thought to think about. We are not just a Christian family. Now, right away, some people are like, what? Huh? Huh? What? We're not a Christian? No, we're not just a Christian family. We are a Christ-centered home. All right, let me explain. See, what you're doing now is you're moving from being a Christian family. You can say it all day long. Yep, we're a Christian family. Oh, but, yeah, maybe the show we watched on Netflix maybe wasn't a great show. Yeah, I know, we only go to church like once every month. See, what you're doing now is, is, is being a Christian family. You know, there's traditions, and, and you're reading your Bible, you're going to church, you, you've set up parameters. Those are all great things. But that's just the beginning. See, those are good things to put in place. But then you want to go to doing what Jesus requires of us. So it's not that we just say we're a Christian family. We are now saying, no, we are going to be doing. We are a Christ-centered home. And what this now says is that we are going to make a personal decision. We are a Christ-centered home. Our mindset, our focus, our lifestyle, everything is going to change because we want to be like Jesus. But it needs to start with you, Mom and Dad. You need to lead it. You need to lead the way and begin to show them what Jesus looks like. It's not perfect. It's messy. It's dirty. It's, it's a lot going on. But, but having hope still, having peace, love, being like Jesus needs to start with us. And then 
you will begin to see changes. You will begin to see your kids change as you begin to implement this into your home, where it's not just that we are a Christian family, but we are a Christ-centered home. That's what we want. That's how you have a blessed home. So, what changes do you need to make today? Because, you know, it's the best time to start is today, right now. Don't wait till next week. Don't wait to see. Let me just hear a little bit more of this series. No, today. What can you do today to, be, to implement? What changes can you implement today to have a Christ-centered I just before we, we do a little bit more worship, I, let me just pray for you. Because we believe in prayer. And prayer helps. Prayer definitely helps. So let me just pray for you today. Lord, I thank you for, for every home that is represented this morning online. I thank you whether they have young kids. Maybe it's they're just newly married. Maybe they have older kids. Maybe their, their kids have gone, gone out of the home. But I pray whatever their home might look like, I pray that it would be a blessed home. Lord, I, I pray that you help us as parents, that we would lead the way with this, that we would begin to show people what it means to look like Jesus. Lord, I pray that we would make changes so that we are Christ-centered homes. And God, I pray for, for anybody that might be watching this right now that is, that is feeling down, that, that is, it's hard, that you would just surround them with your grace and with your love. And may they know that you are exactly the people that their kids need right now. And that they would begin to make that decision to say, I want to be more like Jesus because I want my kids to be more like Jesus. So I pray you give us the strength, give us the wisdom and the, the patience we need to do this, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We're just going to end with a, a little bit more worship. And I just encourage you, this would be a great time to that, that maybe one of the kids that is not really in, in the room right now, bring them over and let's just worship together. All the way my Savior leads me Who have I to ask beside
So 
is always by my side. What encouragement that is, friends, that what we're talking about is God is going to help you. He'll be with you. When Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, God said, I am right there with you. Whatever you're going through, I will stand with you. God loves and cares about families. He cares about your family. We care about your family. And anything that we can ever do, please reach out to us. We believe in you guys. We're with you. We're in this together. And we're going to make it through. I want to give a few more shout outs. I saw the Coapas family came on. Hello, Margaret. Hello to you, Don. Hello, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody for, for joining with us. And uh, we're excited for what God is going to teach us this month about having a, a blessed home, a Christ-centered home. So have yourselves just a fantastic week, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.